Hello, this is Jeff Beaudry. I'd like to introduce you to this video. This is a part of our one-day conference on student growth and educator effectiveness. Um, and the title of the conference is Teacher Evaluation, Student Growth and Educator Effectiveness, Finding a Place at the Assessment Table. And it will be at the University of Southern Maine. The video that we're going to feature here is um, a presentation by Jim Gorman, who is a high school teacher uh, from Northbridge High School in Massachusetts, entitled, How Can Conceptual Change Be Visualized Using Concept Maps? The work that Jim has done also appears in a edited book uh, by Lenny Chudletsky and, and my, uh, myself, Jeff Beaudry, called Cases on Teaching Critical Thinking Through Visual Representation Strategies. As you listen to this video presentation, I want you to think about a few things that have to do with assessment and concept maps. First of all, there are discussions about different types of rubrics to assess semantics, topology, that is the shape of maps, uh, for peer review, and for depth of learning, as well as a very in-depth concept map grading sheet. You'll see these and you'll start to see the purposes differ for each one. But I also want you to be aware of something that Jim made very clear. And I quote, I don't tend to grade them, that is the maps, because for the students it is an ongoing process and they can go back and revise them. I just want you to keep that in mind as you try to figure out how to balance formative and summative assessment. And finally, here are some questions to think about uh, that have to do with the type of things that students are looking at in their maps. Um, how did the mapping help students understand the topic of motion? Describe the use of maps as evidence in the progression of learning. You'll see that a number of maps were used um, for this one student, uh, five, in order to allow that student to show the, the pr progress or change in their in, uh, learning over time. Secondly, there are different types or different stages of map development that are discussed. Spokes, chains, networks, and cycles. Uh, has this helped you understand these different stages of map development. And finally, back to the point about balance. How did the instructor use maps for, with students for formative purposes and for grading and summative purposes? Hello, my name is James Gorman. I'm a teacher at Northbridge High School in Northbridge, Massachusetts. Um, I thank Dr. Beaudry very much for inviting me to address this group. Um, I'm going to be talking about visualizing student conceptual change um, using a specific tool called concept maps. You might or might not be familiar with what concept maps are, but this presentation is kind of um, what was it's in a concept map style here. So we creating concept maps as a way of visualizing our personal understanding. Okay? Each person in that room has a different idea or understanding of what a dog is. Some fear them, some love them, some find them benign. It's all really related to our personal experiences. And so concept maps look at that and um, give the student the ability to express that along with the concept. So it can be read as a whole. Concept maps, what I love about them is it promotes higher order thinking. It forces the students to break down info into parts and find evidence to support those generalizations. So when they're talking about a dog or a cat or a ball falling, anything in the world, right, they can break it down into individual concepts, right? A ball. What is a ball? Right? It might have colors, it might, there's all sorts of things they can differentiate on. <clears throat> and then, um, when they're looking at those concepts as a whole, right, they can maybe see connections between them. Okay? So fitting new insights into relationship with prior knowledge. So as we go through a unit, in physics per se, we're learning about objects that fall. They might have some understanding of gravity, but maybe not 
a full, what we would consider a physics, a Newtonian understanding of what gravity is, right? 9.8 meters per second, 32 feet um, per second squared. Those numbers probably don't even occur to them, but as they go through, they can incorporate that information into what they already know and further elaborate. Um, one thing I love to do with my students is um, having them use whiteboards. Getting them together and using whiteboards, and I'll um, show an example here of a whiteboard. Let's see. Where they just, it's a large three by two uh, whiteboard that the groups get at the lab benches. It might be two to three, maybe sometimes four, depending on the size of the class. Students to a whiteboard. Um, sometimes we use sticky notes, sometimes not. And I just give them a list of the vocabulary. What are we starting off with? What are the main themes here, like vectors, quantities, scalars? And I ask them to order them, right? Make a bunch of true statements about those. So a quantity can be either a scalar or a vector. Not a bad statement. And then the students in groups work on taking and elaborating what a scalar is, right? Might have units and a magnitude. Well, how is that different from something like a vector, which would consist of a direction, units, and magnitude? And they progressively differentiate. And sometimes they find links between them. Sometimes not. Let me see if I can bring up this second one. This group here, they organize it in sometimes different ways, sometimes similar ways. Sometimes they have um, other information that might not have been in other presentations. And as I go around, I'm looking at these. Okay? I'm looking at the structure of them. Is it branching out? So you can see there's a branch for scalar, there's a branch for vector that's much more differentiated than scalars, as I would expect, right? Because we're talking about vector components, adding them together, right? You can see here there's, um, they need to elaborate this concept about vector components. Um, how are they using those mathematical equations? And so as I was going around, I might look at that and say, okay, you talk about vector components. What about vector components, right? How are you mathematically doing that? Just getting them to really um, interact with the material and debate each other, which happens quite often, um, especially on when we get further on in the year, they'll really debate what a word might mean. One person sees it one way. One person sees the situation the other way, and they'll be arguing. And most times, they might not be wrong at all. Both of them might actually be correct. It just depends how you look at it. Um, so, let's see here. Right? When I'm going around, also, I'm looking for misconceptions right? Statements that might be false, right? They're really red glaring ones on there sometimes. And it gives me a chance to talk with the students, right? I don't have to ask 20 questions to find out what they understand. They're giving it to me presented in a visual format that I can then go in and almost poke their brain, needle them on points, where I can see, oh, they have a really nice elaborate understanding of um, an object being thrown up in the air and what happens. But they might be missing one key element. Or more importantly, they might have a misconception. Like at the top, acceleration isn't, isn't, um, isn't 9.8, it's zero. Right? And those will be all little things I can look at with concept maps. example of 
the first map. This is like their pretest. Okay. And you can see here, I had motion, time, space, velocity, acceleration. These were all on there in you know rudimentary form like they are. And I had all these other sorry about that. I had all these other concepts, one dimension, motion map, instantaneous, average, graph, position, free fall. They were on the side here called the parking lot. So I asked them, make some meaning of this. What do these terms mean to you? Can you relate them? And so this was his first try at it. His second go around is represented here where the student goes on and he has a little bit more understanding. You can see he's added some concepts in here, like vector and scalar. He's also started to make it his own. I tell them, make it your own. If we're talking about motion, what do you like about motion? This student happened to particularly like uh, snowboarding. In the third iteration, you can now see that tangle, that mess that existed before, is now starting to be teased out here. You can see accel velocity, acceleration, displacement on this side, motion maps, time, space. They're all kind of disconnected. And what we'll see the students start doing is now connecting those various domains. Okay? <clears throat> So you have displacement and velocity still here. But now it's starting to connect with time through rates over to the motion maps and actually looking at those, those objects. Okay. And then as we go, oh, I didn't point out. As we're going through, in CMAP tools, I can leave little notes for the students. And so that's what these are, little notes to ask them questions or make suggestions. You could really do anything you'd like. And this is his, I think, close to his final version of what we ended up with. A whole bunch of rubrics um, that have been developed um, over the years. Um, there's semantics, just looking at what the student says. Right, what those propositional phrases say. There's ones that look at topology, the structure of the map. Are there any cycles? All that sort of stuff. There's peer review you could do, right? One reviewing another article, uh, another concept map. Depth of learning. I like this one. This one actually compares a pre and post test. Okay, so this one it breaks it down into deep surface or no learning and it's comparing two concept maps one in the beginning and one along the process right and it's looking at the concepts was there any concepts added right how are the linking phrases that put everything together are they valid are they true statements do they explain and give you some insight is there evidence provided about those connections and then generally the overall structure, is it a network-like structure or is it chain, right? Or is it just like a spoke structure? All of those can be put together into um, a rubric and there's no standard way right now of doing it. There's all different versions. Um, myself, I don't tend to grade them um, just because the student, for the students, it's always an ongoing process. They can go back and revise them. So.